This is the Community Chair Trifecta, Support, Structure, and Accountability in the Capstone Intensive. And our presenter today is going to be Dr. Pamela Harrison, who is a contributing faculty member in the Richard W. Riley College of Education and Leadership. Before I turn things over to Pamela, I want to do a quick overview of how to use GoToWebinar, and that will also uh, give those uh, who are running it just a couple minutes late, a couple minutes to get into the classroom. So you should be seeing on the left side of the screen the um, control panel that should be on the right side of your screen. If it's not showing like this and instead it looks more like this in minimized view, all you have to do is just click the arrow and the full control panel will return back to you. You can also click that arrow again to have the control panel return back to minimized view. And there may be times you want to do this uh, if there's uh, text that's toward the right of the slide that you can't see. Uh, so that way uh, you're able to see everything on the screen. Uh, we want to get your questions and participation throughout uh, the webinar and we'll actually be hearing from you all in just a couple minutes to introduce yourselves. Um, a couple of ways you can interact uh, during the webinar include the questions panel. Uh, you can send in your questions uh, through this area. Just send your questions in the bottom text part portion here and it will come back to us. Um, if we respond via text, you'll see your answer up here in the top part of the questions area. This is also, if you go to your questions panel now in the top area, this is where we also put links to information. Uh, for example, the closed captioning information is now there. The other way you can participate is click the raise hand button. And when you do that, we will unmute your um, microphone so that way you can share your thoughts. Uh, we have put everyone's microphone or, or telephone on uh, the mute setting just to cut down on any background noise so that you can hear our presenter clearly. Um, a couple other things to mention, um, technical support will be available through the phone number you see on the screen or you can just send your questions through the uh, questions area. And as I mentioned, closed captioning is available through the link in the questions area. Um, after today's webinar, we will be sending a follow-up email that includes a link to the PowerPoint slides and the recording link. Um, also in the questions area at the end, we will put a evaluation link there so that you have that available for you. Um, so with that, um, I'd actually like to go ahead and turn things over to Dr. Pamela Harrison, who's going to be our presenter today. And Pamela, whenever you are ready, you can go ahead and share your screen. We get the slideshow up here. Okay, uh, can everybody hear me? Um, um, and see my screen at this point. Is there anybody who cannot? If you would raise your hand or let us know. I think we, okay, we can great. see it. Well, I'd like to welcome you. <clears throat> this is the committee chair trifecta, support structure and accountability in the capstone intensive. We are focusing primarily on the doctoral study and the dissertation uh, capstones, whether that be with the EDD program or the PhD program or perhaps perhaps the DBA program. So um, we hope that it will be something that will be of value for you. This was originally presented at the winter faculty meeting in January in Orlando. So let's move on. And the first thing I would like for you to do is introduce yourselves. Um, and I will do the same. I'll kind of model for you what I'm asking you to do. I see some questions. Do we have some questions? Um, sound quality. Uh, we see our audio is a bit garbled. Voice is breaking up staticky. Sound quality very poor. Is everybody else having trouble? Scott, are you having trouble hearing me? Um, I know if you um, are you using a headset or a um, external mic on your computer? Mic. Okay, maybe you can just get a little bit closer to the microphone, that might help. Okay, let's try this again. Um, hopefully that's better. Uh, as we go through with our introductions, um, I would like for you, as well as introducing you, your, we obviously see your name, but tell us uh, what your role is at Walden. And then if you would also share with us uh, a couple of things. One, what is your greatest success? or, and you can do both if you want to, your greatest frustration and disappointment in your role as Capstone Committee Chair for Wallen students. 
And now that is not a picture of me at the left. However, I have felt like that on many occasions. Um, I actually work in the Richard W. Riley College of Education. I work with administrative leadership students. Um, I chair a lot of committees and I'm also second on a lot of committees. I've been with Walden for seven years. I have developed over those seven years some approaches that work with me, with my students, and that's essentially what this session is about. It's about best practices that I have found. Hopefully you might find something that you might use as well. As far as the greatest success, obviously the greatest success is when our students complete and walk and get hooded. But um, I guess my greatest frustration and disappointment is, is that there have been students who have not, that have not completed, um, that we were not able to get to that point. And um, so I guess that's why I have decided to put something like this together, together to hopefully help other people. So um, let's go through our attendees now, and we'll just start at the top. So if you could um, unmute Boyd, and Boyd, if you would share with us your, your affiliation with Walden and your greatest success or frustration disappointment. Uh, my name is Boyd, Boyd Dressler. Um, I work with about 15 uh, doctoral students in this category. Um, the greatest success has been working with these students. I have the great opportunity to work with Eagles, and I've got I'm working with uh, four people right now who are in the process of finishing their, their degree. I've had uh, the opportunity to work with two students who have already finished, plus uh, being on the committee. Uh, the frustration is helping students who um, have at least two other lives beyond Walden, and that's their personal lives as well as professional lives, and helping them navigate the, the challenges of uh, being a doctor student. Thank you so much for bringing that up, Boyd, because that is absolutely uh, the issue, and we that's exactly why we talk about this kind of as beating the odds, because students' lives definitely get in the way and uh, create challenges for them. So uh, we'll, we'll try to talk about some of those things as we go through. Thank you. David? David, are you there? Okay, are you hearing me okay, Dave Falvo? I'm on a new I'm on a new computer and this is the first time I use it for webinar. Anyway, I'll be brief. I, I have shared um, eight students to fruition, meaning they got their degrees, uh, but only one of them has been at Walden. I'm fairly new. Um, I started a couple years ago. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned. That it's taken me a lot longer than I expected, but. You know, I started uh, our students uh, that I'm working with. Many of them, uh, you know, started uh, several terms ago. So um, I only had a few when I first started. I am uh, working with someone else at the seminar here today. Uh, my biggest uh, frustration is really when a student will not really take responsibility and ownership, and they end up not succeeding. It's not happened often, but um, it really hurts when you see a student who could succeed but won't succeed be, not because they don't have the ability but because they aren't capable of, of following directions and taking taking guidance and responsibility. I will say I love working at Walden. I, I have uh, 10 chairs now and as many uh, second member roles and I'm a URR and I'm now uh, full time or I'm sorry I'm contributing faculty and I'm semi-retired so Walden is my only home right now and I'm, I'm very honored to be at this workshop and to be able to work with our students. Thanks for asking. Well, thank you, David. And I have to tell you that I feel the same way even I've been at Walden for many years, uh, but I also am retired from public school work and uh, some face-to-face -face university work, but have definitely enjoyed my time at Walden. I also share your concern about those students that we just know could do it if they would just focus and be a little bit more coachable. Uh, we try to help them and then we make the same comments over and over again. It's very frustrating and I, I share your frustration with that as well. Thank you for your contribution. Um, and now next we'll go to Jan.
Okay, it looks like Jan may have sent hers in because um, she may not be able to uh, share where she is. Uh, she says she's a contributing faculty member in the DBA program and fairly new and is really enjoying the students. Um, okay, so she writes that into us, Paola. Okay, okay, thank you for sharing that and we're happy to have you with us, Jan. It's great to have people from a variety of programs here, so we appreciate you doing that. Um, and next we'll go to Janet. Janet, are you there? Janet? No? I think it's a similar circumstance where she okay. taps in too. Um, and, we... um, and she writes in, um, Okay. Uh, she's uh, also a contributing faculty member as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And let's move on to uh, Melinda. Melinda. Melinda Haley. There you have her unmuted, Scott. Um, I'm trying to. She's calling in on a phone. Um, and I think, Melinda, if you can hear us, if you put in your audio pin, um, you should see it in the audio information. I think that's why that's not working. Uh, but let's go to someone else. Let's go to the next one, Ramo. Ramo. Raymo, are you there? Okay. Um, Raymo, do, do, do you have an introduction for us? Okay. Okay, okay. Raymo. Uh, Raymo, if your microphone's not working, if you just want to send it into the questions area, we can get to it there. All right. Great. Okay, Richard. Richard, I think you Richard? have uh, muted yourself. You want to unmute yourself and um, give us your introduction. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I am a new contributing uh, EDD faculty, research faculty in the uh, School of Education. And I've been teaching online for about 10 years and overall about 20 years teaching and working in higher education. My greatest joy is helping, helping students do things that they didn't think that they could do and taking them, because I really challenge my students, um, helping them to break through into higher levels of thinking, criti critically reviewing the literature, writing, the ahas that take place when they start to see how the design elements of their study come through. Um, and I think my biggest frustration, I'm, I'm going to kind of shift gears on that and say my biggest frustration is when students get through their program, and this is not the case with Walden because I don't know if this happens, um, but at other universities where I've worked, Seeing students come through their coursework phase with a 4.0, thinking that they know everything, <laughs> passing their comprehensive exam, um, and for any number of reasons, they really didn't learn what they were supposed to learn in their program. And I've seen some almost blaming the victim, that, that the students are blamed for not having mastered core skills. Um, and yet, they were never really challenged. They didn't get the kind of in-depth feedback that they needed. Um, there was a lot of grade inflation, perhaps. And they maybe never encountered one of those faculty who was really going to hold their feet to the fire. And that's been my biggest frustration, because I feel as if, if they were let down. Um, I, I appreciate that, Richard. As one of those who uh, chairs committees as well as teaches courses, I see that uh, I, it's very important to me as I teach my classes to uh, have those high expectations. Many times I'll have students tell me as they go through their courses and then they get me, they'll say, well, nobody's ever told me that before about my writing. First of all, I believe about half of what they tell me about those kinds of things because I know what we're dealing with, but sometimes they haven't ever had anybody tell them that. Other times they've had it, but they've not listened. So uh, I think you bring up some really good points. Thank you for sharing those. And now we'll go on to Royce. Royce, are you there? 
Uh, yes, I am. Good, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Royce Robertson. I am a contributing faculty member in the EDD and PhD in Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. Um, my greatest success so far as a committee chair uh, has been that I haven't made any mistakes. Uh, that's because I haven't been assigned any any students yet. So I, I guess I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm batting clean there. Um, that kind of turns to the frustration is that I'm the type of person who needs to know, uh, really feel like I understand the process inside and out, but I understand that it's a process best learned by, by doing it and, and by making mistakes. It's the nature of learning. So for me, it's really just a matter of I'm, I'm at step one in the process. Everything that you say today, I will thoroughly appreciate and, and hopefully be able to apply it as soon as possible. So thank you for offering this panel. Well, thank you, Royce. I, I'm glad to know. It's always nice to know that, that, that what our audience is, and it's good to know that we have you and a few others out there who are kind of new at this, at least new at it with Walden. So hopefully uh, you'll take away something that you can use. So thank you for sharing that. It's great to be in a situation where you're batting a thousand, you know, and that happens very often, so kudos to you. Okay, let's go on to Selena. Selena, are you there? I do not see, I do not hear from Selena. Yep, I don't either. Um, so let's, um, Selena, if you want to send your introduction in through the um, text area, that will work. Um, and then uh, Melissa, Melinda did send hers in. She wanted to let us know she's Melinda Haley, Counselor Education and Supervision, School of Counseling, uh, core faculty member. She's been with Walden just over a year and is currently chairing eight dissertations. All right, great. Thank you, and welcome, Melinda. And we'll go to Susan. And Susan, sorry, Susan, would you like to? Susan, are you there? I'm hearing kind of a garbled from Susan. Susan, are you there? Is anybody hearing? Susan? No, I think Susan, same thing. If you want to send yours through the um, area, that will be fine. I think she may have. She did. She sent hers in. Susan says some PH, um, I mean, PhD management. So, and her success is with students that accept feedback and respond to fast track process. Frustration with Susan's who take a leave of absence when confronted with required changes. Uh, thank you, Susan, for sharing that. Yeah, we do um, sometimes deal with those who, who have to kind of take a break when, when the challenges get too much. So uh, thank you for sharing that. I noticed you mentioned the fast track. Um, my system is not Tom's fast track, but it is a system that has been successful with students over time. So maybe you'll get another piece out of this that you can use. I hope so. I want to thank everyone for your contributions and for giving us a a um, kind of a lens to look at these issues through. We're going to be talking today about several different things, but the objectives that I would like for you to, to uh, accomplish, hopefully, would be that you would reflect upon your effectiveness as committee chairs for Walden Capstone students. At least just think, I mean, that's the beginning of any kind of change. Think about how successful you've been, and, and that was partly what that exercise was designed to do. If you have not yet worked with any Walden students, then you can certainly think about how effective you would like to be as you go forward and what you might want to apply. The second objective would be to evaluate your performance in this role, specifically in the areas of support, structure, and accountability. Look for things that you can improve in, look for areas for growth. And, you know, again, if you're new with us at Walden, um, just uh, begin to begin begin to think about these three pieces as key pieces to your success with students. And then finally, identify and subsequently implement at least one new strategy to address areas of growth with your students and, and things that you've identified that you need to work on. So but you may not be horse racing fans and you may not realize what a trifecta is, but that is the title of the session, so let's talk about that for just a minute. If you have ever attended horse racing, and made a bet. Most people are familiar with the daily double. You're betting on the first two races. You're trying to pick the winners in those first two races. A 
trifecta is a bet that you can make on nearly every race. And in it, it is really the ultimate odds beating bet in horse racing. You are attempting to choose the winner, uh, the, one, the horse that's going to come in first and win, the horse that's going to come in second as place, and the horse that's going to come in third as show. So you are identifying specifically what these horses, how these horses are going to perform. It's a very, very difficult bet to win because it requires that you focus on three different horses in three different places and get them exactly positioned correctly. For our purposes, a winning trifecta would be the right amount of these three things of support, structure, and accountability that our students need to beat the odds and graduate. And when we say beat the odds, like when I did this session at the winter session, uh, winter faculty meetings, uh, a person in the audience said, is that really right? I mean, are the odds against them? Well, I all I would offer for that is, indeed, I think the odds in life are against anybody getting a doctoral degree. Think about the percentage of people in the world who actually have a doctoral degree, who have written that dissertation, who've been successful at that. It's tough, and the things that come up for our students, like some of you mentioned in your introductions, are what get in the way. So let's talk about how we, as committee chairs, can uh, provide these three elements of support, structure, and accountability, and those will be what we'll be focusing on today. I'd like you now, this is part of our second objective of evaluating our role, I'd like you to take a minute to identify one practice that you use to effectively address these three pieces. One practice that you use to provide support for your students, one that you use to provide structure, and one that you use to provide accountability. <coughs> Excuse me. If you would think about that for a minute, and then if you would use the raise your hand function on your, um, on your little toolbar over here, if you would like to share one that you have come up with, and we would like for you to do that. And you can also write those in if you would like to um, as a question in the question area. You could write in your comment about something that you do currently to in one of these three areas. Does anybody have one that they would like to share? Uh, so while we're waiting for if anyone wants to click the raise hand button, uh, we do have a couple that came in through the questions area, Pamela. Um, Janet writes in lots of communication and posting in the classroom, documenting meetings. Uh, David writes in structure. And Melinda says support. Uh, use the dissertation shell to check in weekly with encouragement and also utilize email to encourage students to be timely in their revisions. Okay, great. Those are wonderful examples, and in fact, similar to some of the things we're going to talk about. Thank you for sharing those. So I'm going to move on to showing you kind of some things. Oh, and I see a hand up. Remo? Hi. Uh, yeah, one thing I do is through my weekly advising sessions through Skype, um, we provide a support structure where uh, each student presents out on their progress so far. And um, we all give them feedback. Wonderful. That's a, it's a great strategy. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Ramo. Anybody else? Yep. Um, Pamela, uh, Dr. Uh, Jan wrote, uh, James wrote in uh, support phone calls to students, structure announcements posted online in the course, and accountability discussion group comments to each student. OK. Great. Another great um, suggestion or another great practice from Jan. So thank you very much for sharing those. Okay, well, let's, let's move forward. I'm going to share a few things that I do. You're going to hopefully find something that, that you at least validates what you're doing, or perhaps you have a new way of thinking about something. So let's see if we can move forward here. Okay. I've used some visuals here just to kind of to, to summarize some of the things we do in the support arena. And of course, this first one, we all know cheerleaders. And as uh, mentors for our students, as uh, committee chairs, I don't know about you, but I feel like I do a lot of cheerleading, a lot of encouraging, a lot of motivating, a lot of trying to, to keep people on the right track. Sometimes I feel like if they cared about it as much as I care about it, then we'd be making great progress. 
So that's that definitely that cheerleading role. And then, of course, we have the counselor role. And that is something that, in, of course, in any kind of relationship, and that's certainly what we're dealing with here. We are not just a committee chair. We are having a relationship with this student, sometimes over long periods of time. And we often have to be that counselor for them, listening, whether the issues are at work or at home or wherever they may be. Um, that is a role that we play. And then the, the best role that we play is when we celebrate. Uh, and that's certainly another piece of support. Our students need to, to know that we're excited for them. I frequently use the discussion, um, the discussion thread in our uh, intensive class to share, you know, uh, milestones that the various members in the cohort have passed. Um, when we start each new semester, I always talk about what they've done and what they who's who's here and who's accomplished this. And so those are great ways for them to realize that yes, they've actually done something and somebody noticed. And then of course there are those critical conversations that we have to have sometimes. Um, it's tough to have those, but every now and then we have students who need a little reality therapy. And sometimes that reality therapy comes to us as the chair to present. We are required to talk to them about things that that um, they probably really don't want to hear, the fact that they're not making things a priority. Maybe the fact that uh, some of you mentioned that they're, they're not listening to what we tell them. They're not allowing themselves to be coached. So these are all aspects. I'd like to show you some examples of some of the things I do with support, which are similar to some of the things you said. Um, I do a lot of reminding. I know they're adults. I know they're doctoral students. But I don't know about you. I need a reminder when I have something due. And so I do a lot of reminding. Uh, this particular one would be an announcement that would be also sent out as an email in the classroom, reminding them that they have a draft due. And this brings up something else, which we'll get to in a minute. I provide them, for their semester plan, the actual dates that their drafts are due. When I first started uh, working with Walnut students about seven years ago, I thought, you know, these are doctoral students. When I did my dissertation, I was self-motivated and self-directed. At least that's the way I remember it. And I managed to take care of all my business. But I quickly learned that, that most of them do not. They need that structure. So now I provide them with dates. I remind them when those things are due. And I also remind them, as you see in this last sentence, that they will be held accountable for whether they submit a draft or not. Um, this next one is a similar thing, but it's actually a discussion post. And again, um, trying to kind of point out to them that they're paying good money for this. And in this case, uh, we're in week five. I've learned that on, in those discussion threads in the capstone projects, uh, capstone intensives, they frequently lose track of what week it is. They're supposed to be posting and discussing. So, so I put the date in there for them to remind them, hey, if you're posting right here, it should be between these dates. And then I remind them, hey, you know, the semester, and our semester is 16 weeks in the EDD program, it's 25% gone. Have you gotten your money's worth of that? It's important that they uh, remember that they're paying money for this and they ought to be getting something out of it, and that's up to them. And then finally, this last little example has to do with their semester plans and reminding them that when we get this far in the semester into week 10, that um, they should be checking to make sure they're on track with their semester plan. It seems to be that sometimes students just submit those plans and then they kind of forget about them until the last week of the semester. I used to have students that would do that. That doesn't happen anymore. It used to happen because I did not provide the structure that said, you've got to have a draft due here and here and here and here, and they'd send me one at the last minute. So now I that never happens because, or if it does happen, they, I have easy documentation to provide the appropriate grade of an unsatisfactory. Um, as we move on from support, before we leave support and get into structure, I'd like to ask if anybody has any comments or questions about these strategies, if it may be triggered something that you'd like to share that you do, raise your hand or send it as a question if you would like to contribute to this part of the discussion.
Okay, I see Dave. Dave, you have a comment? Okay, thank, thanks for calling on me. I just wanted to share that um, it's been a learning experience for me. I've come to the realization that uh, I must provide that structure and the most important accountability. In the beginning, I was very lenient in grading and perhaps students' S's when they really didn't deserve them. And that only hurt them because it, it, it reinforced their bad habits. So I'm in a transformation now. And I think what you're talking about uh, uh, struck a chord with me. So thanks. Thank you, David. And, and uh, I completely, I completely agree. I share your sentiments. I feel your pain. I, I know that I did the same thing. I look back on some of those early semesters, and I thought I was doing students a favor by being gentle with them. And um, at the same time, I was actually not helping them at all. They, they need us to be. Uh, structured for them. Anybody else with a comment about support before we do get on into the idea of how to provide that structure? Okay, let's uh, go on and we're going to talk a little bit about the structure that precedes actually this support that we provide. Um, and of course, Essentially, when I think about structure and we think about a theoretical foundation for that, why should we be providing the structure? Why can't they provide it themselves? Well, first of all, uh, it's really that's a moot point. If they're not providing it themselves, it's got to come from somewhere, and we're the one to provide it. The most important thing is we've got to help students understand that when they get to the dissertation or the doctoral study writing phase of their uh, of their program, they have to make that a priority. It can't be something that they work on on Sunday afternoons only or that they continue to go out every Friday night with the gals or the guys or whatever. Yes, they have jobs and they have families, but they have to make this some kind of priority or it will not happen. Um, we also need to show, I believe, that we have very high expectations for them. Uh, they can't they can't just continue to do what they've always done that there are certain expectations and we do that by providing structure another thing that we do is we help them manage their time when we provide structure for them because many of them that's a big piece for them they do not know how to manage their time to accomplish this big of a task and so what happens is that they spend a lot of time like this they're exhausted they they, they don't they're not focused. They sit down at the computer to write, and I've had them tell me before, you know, it takes me about an hour to kind of get started, and I'm like, well, that's an hour too long. When you sit down there, you need to be able to get started, and so we want to go from that to this. We want uh, Superwoman or Superman moving forward. So how do we help them do that? That is the question. This is what you're seeing here is a sample of the announcement that I post at the beginning of each semester. I make it very clear that students, no matter what stage they're in, meaning if they are writing, working on their prospectus still, or if they are working on their proposal, or if they are collecting data, or if they are writing up their final uh, chapters, creating their project, whatever stage they're in, that Walden expects that they're going to submit at least six documents in the semester. And the new semester plan that we have, I'm not sure if everybody has it, but in the Riley College we have a semester plan that requires them to submit something every month. So I make that clear that they must do that. Um, and the next part of this, this is kind of a two-page or a two-slide uh, piece here, is I give them those deadlines that I mentioned earlier. This was, for example, the semester that began on October 28th. It's a 16-week semester for us. So the first draft I wanted in by the end of week three. None of this, I piddled around for two or three months, and finally I sent something in. I want to see right off the bat what you've got. And then, the, then you have about four weeks to get the next one in, and I think about four weeks to the next one, and four weeks to the next one. And so that way, um, I have time to get back to them what they submit to me, and they have time to be sending me something else. And I, uh, unless they are in those very, very final stages of either proposal or study, then I'm not usually looking at the entire document every time anyway. So they can be working on one piece while they're preparing the next piece. But it's important 
that they understand that they are not going to make progress by submitting one draft every three months or so. That's just simply not going to happen. And I even mentioned down below that they should consider sending more if they are in the early stages of their program. So the main way that I provide structure for them is by establishing the schedule and then holding them accountable for that. Um, the other piece that putting the schedule together does, just to be very honest between us as colleagues, one of the hardest parts about being a committee chair is that you never know when you're going to get their stuff. I mean, they, they just send you, you might, you might roll along for two or three weeks with nothing to review and then all of a sudden you've got four uh, large documents or five large documents that you need to get back in three or four days. Yes, we have two weeks, but we try not to take that long. And so I feel like this way at least it gives me a little bit more control over when they're going to send things as well. They can certainly send them to me earlier than these dates, but they have to at least have by, for example, by December 15th in this particular semester, they had to have sent in two drafts. Um, so the, this is a way that I feel like it helps provide them and organize them and give them a, in, uh, a picture of what the expectations are and what they're, how they're going to have to manage their time, which are those things that we talked about. So comments or questions based on uh, this part, the substructure part, before we get into the accountability piece. Um, while people may be uh, typing in some things, we did get a question, Pamela. Um, Richard asks, do you recommend being easier or harder on grading assessment feedback on drafts versus perspectives and proposal or, or structure? Okay, say that for me again. Sure. Uh, do you recommend being easier or harder on grading assessments, uh, providing feedback on drafts of the perspectives or the proposal or structure? Um, well, as for me, and I, I can only tell you what seems to work for me, I try with the prospectus, honestly, uh, I try to get us past that as quickly as possible simply because um, it, is a, it is a good, uh, what I think of more as a pre-writing exercise, it's a great way for them to get their thoughts down and for us to begin to organize this and get the, the skeleton of the proposal. But it is not the proposal, and the proposal is what ultimately we're going to need to have approved to move forward with the study. So I try to be very, uh, yes, honest, and I don't let anything go past in the prospectus that I don't, that I know is not going to work. But if there are things that need to be tweaked that I know we're going to tweak, I'll move us on to the proposal level if I can so that we can actually work in the framework of what we're going to be ultimately submitting for approval. Does that answer the question, I think? I hope. Any other questions? Uh, Richard Rivai, yep, that was thankful. I see how many weeks, months. Yes. Okay, good, good, helpful, good, thank you. And I see a question, um, let's see, I think I saw a question about do, how many months do I recommend taking or something? Am I, did I miss that or lose that? Um, so the Can question looks like is how many weeks or months do you suggest for each stage? Uh, well, of course, everything depends on the students a lot, but I really push in using this system, I have had success pushing my students to get the prospectus done in that very first semester they have to do it in, which in our program overlaps with their last class. That's hard for them to do, but I think if you get them started and get them right away, understanding that this is not, you know, I think some students feel like they finish their coursework and then they kind of get this sort of mental break. And they don't understand that is the farthest thing from the truth. You know, that is when things need to gear up after they finish their coursework. And yet there t always tends to be this sense of sort of just kind of, well, I can kind of relax a little bit now. So if you get them into the prospectus and they, they experience the success of completing that milestone, and now we're moving on to the proposal. You know, I've had, I have every range of students in terms of how long it takes for them to do the proposal. 
but I always tell them that it should take, that, that they need to figure on to get the entire thing approved, and, and even if they're working at a fast pace, two semesters to get the proposal approved. Um, I wish it didn't take that long, but with the process that's in place, as well as them understanding how to write this thing that they have no clue about, um, that's not an unusual thing at all. Other questions or comments? I think okay. we're all caught up. I think we will move on unless you see anything, Scott, that I'm missing. Um, no, nope, I think, I we'll think we're all caught up. We'll talk a little bit about, I'm sorry, you see something? I was just going to say, I think we're all caught up. Okay, great. We'll move forward then and talk a little bit about accountability. I know this is kind of a creepy picture, but I really liked what it had to say. Um, accountability is the glue that ties commitment to the result. I don't know about you, but I have students who are so committed. They, I mean, in, the, in their hearts, they're committed. They want to do this. This is their dream. They told Grandma they were going to do this. They told, told Uncle Joe they were going to do this. And they are so committed to doing it, but they don't know how to get from I want to to I did. And so I think that the structure we've talked about, the support that we've talked about does help, but now we're going we're to get to the kind of the nitty gritty of holding them, them and us accountable for their success. I'm going to share with you in this section uh, essentially some screens uh, that I cut and pasted into this document of a um, an Excel chart that I use. Uh, you're just going to see one student basically at a time displayed on this Excel chart, but you have to understand I have it for all my students I've ever chaired at Walden. So it is a massive document. But what it does is it provides me with an overview of their progress and it helps me look back and go, why did it, this take so long right there? What could I have done different and so forth? So what you're seeing here, and I'm first showing you a student who was a student who actually came to me in the summer of 2012. And he finished in January of just recently, January of 2014. So he went from prospectus, beginning the prospectus, to final completion in 18 months. That is unusual. I would like to tell you that, yes, all of my students do that. They don't all do that. He was committed, and he had the capacity to, to follow through on that commitment. So his looks really good. But what you're seeing here is on this chart, I have the student's name on the left. I list who their, their second member, their URR. I list their time zone so that when we plan phone calls, I have, have that clear. And then I have a phone log where I've listed all the times that we visit and essentially what we have visited about. And then um, I list every draft they send me. As soon as I get it, I put it on here. I put the date that I received it. And then I put in yellow, as you can see, this, very, this one down at the bottom, I highlight in yellow when I have to have it returned to them by, that 14-day limit. Um, I work very, very hard to get it back to them before then, but I want myself to know when I go and look at this chart, as I do every day, what's out there that I need to get onto. So it also, looking back, I can see the progress he made. Now, you're wondering why this part right here is shaded in gold. When they submit their semester plan, I put it on this list, what, the, what dates and what they intend to submit on those dates. I shade it in this gold. Then as they meet the requirement, like if he if we had got a proposal to URR on 5 1 of 2013, that would have been unshaded. So then we would have been successful. You can see then that this student, except for this one period right here, everything they said they were going to do, everything he said he was going to do, he did. So why did this not work out? Because he moved to a different district. He could not get approval in the old district any longer to collect data. We went through the whole period of getting a, a new district lined up and so forth. So you can see that this was a, a time here where he, he could not have met his plan, but it still shows that way on my chart. I also put over here when, uh, we, when he defends his proposal. You can see the date there. And then I put a column for when I got paid for that, just between us 
faculty members here, it's not a bad thing at Walden to keep up with when you're getting paid for what, because they are they have a lot of people to keep up with. So I put that on my chart as well. The next chart is simply a, a, a larger version of that, and I included it when I was doing the presentation at the faculty meeting because it was difficult to see from a distance. But you can see that it's essentially the same thing on this one, just blown up a little bit. But I want to show you a different student. This student has been with me a long time, well, not that long, longer than the other student. But you can see he has not been as diligent at meeting. He would go, he would kind of fall off the grid for a while. Here's a time when, here was his plan, what's in gold, but he didn't turn anything. So he fell off the grid for practically a whole semester, and so he got a U that semester. So I make note of when I give, sign that U so I can look back and see their whole history. This is just a part of his picture. It's not the whole picture for him by any means. But you can see the various things that we've had talked about in our phone calls. You can see why I again warned him about a U. I ended up not giving it to him, I think, that semester. Um, here where we even had a question, I thought he'd sent me the wrong, the wrong file, and so forth. So you can see that it's a way of keeping the big picture for each of your students using that accountability chart. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, let's go back to that. So, and before we leave this chart and before we leave this accountability, I want to know if you have any questions or comments. If you, I hope you see the purpose. You know, when we go into each of our individual course shells of the different semesters we have our students, we can see, easily see what they did there. But unless we go separately into every single course shell, we do not get the big picture of this student. And especially when we get time to get down to having some of those critical conversations that we have sometimes, it helps to see the big picture. So anybody have any questions or comments about this particular section? <coughs> Dave, let me hit the click on you there. There you go. David, do you have a comment or a question? David, I didn't hear your comment. Okay, let's try again. David? David, do you have a comment or a question? David, I think you may be self-muted. So just click your microphone to unmute yourself. Okay. Okay, how about now? I'm sorry about that. I did. Yeah, now we've got you. Now we've got you. Okay, sorry. Anyway, I, I started doing something similar to this, and um, I'm, I'm glad you shared it. What I'm finding now is that the students are also required to do this on their semester plan. It's much different, and it's more detailed, and I think that's a good thing because we could use that along with this to watch their progress and make decisions about whether or not they're moving uh, uh, fast enough. So thanks for sharing that. Well, you're welcome, and I guess the new semester plan, I think, is a great improvement over what we had before. It really does help um, help them uh, analyze for themselves and hopefully see their own progress as well as what we're keeping up with. Other questions, comments? Yes. Uh, yep. Uh, Pamela, uh, Jan asked a question. Uh, do you share your chart, your chart with your students? No. I do not share the chart with my students um, because typically, I mean, I could, and, that, and that's not a bad thing to do. I, have, I refer to it sometimes when we're having those critical conversations, but I think it's not a bad thing, and I'm glad you mentioned that. I hadn't really thought about doing that before, but, you know, when you have students who are a bit in denial about the progress they're making or not making, um, this would be a great tool, I think, to, to kind of say, well, let me just kind of, in case you've forgotten, let me kind of show you what's going on here. Great idea. Other hands or questions? I think we're all caught up. Okay, let's go forward. So we're, we're kind of closing in on the end here of this session. and just going to do a little synthesis. Uh, just to remind us kind of where we are with all this, because students feel that the odds are against them sometimes with their capstone, whether that's work or family or job, just, just life in general, uh, the idea of our providing for them these things, and I'll tell you that my students 
those that have been with me long enough to have seen us sort of evolve to this point um, of, of providing more structure, they thank me for it. And I see them making great progress, uh, especially compared to what they were doing before. But again, this idea of structure with expectations of time, making a priority, accountability, being fair and consistent. Um, I don't ever want students to feel like that, that I didn't know what they were doing or I didn't stay on top of it, and these, this provides that. And then, of course, support to meet their goals as well. So I would just like to ask before we close uh, if what you would take away, and, and again, this is kind of like that initial independent and personal assessment, but if you would like to share it, I'd love for you to do it. A new strategy that you might have picked up in this session that you're going to try or adapt. Uh, a different approach, just a different framework of thinking about things, or perhaps validation and encouragement of things that you're already doing or things that you were thinking about doing or directions that you're moving. And then finally, hopefully, that you would know that there are all of us out here are dealing with the same issues. Um, it's not just you that get those students who don't do what they're supposed to do. We are all, we've all got them. And um, that there are supports out there for you, and I certainly would be happy to be a resource for you as well. So um, would anybody like to share a response to this in terms of what they might take away from today's session? All right, Pima, we have one response for, uh, from Janet. Uh, she writes, uh, tips on tracking sheet uh, for student progress. OK, great. So the, you like the tracking sheet. I'm, I'm glad that that helps you. Good. Um, anybody else with any comment? Or OK, Ramo? Let me answer you. He's muted. Can you unmute Ramo? Yep. Go. go ahead, Ramo. <laughs> Hi Pamela, thanks Scott. Um, I uh, started doing that tracking thing. I got in one note, each student has their own notebook. And I was thinking that was just maybe the most ridiculous thing because it will be huge in time. But I thank you for sharing that spreadsheet, if you will, because now that validates it and I'm going to maintain consistency with that. Great. Yeah, and, and, and you're right. I look at it sometimes and I think, oh my goodness, you know, what have I done? I've created this monster. But at the same time, I refer to it all the time. So hang in there. I would encourage you to keep doing that. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? I see Dave. David? I think he's self-muted again. <laughs> yes. Unmute yourself, David. Oh no, I I wasn't going to share. I was just typing that I think I shared enough, but I, I really did uh, get a lot out of your session. I think it's a great reminder. I'm going to encourage uh, some of our newer faculty to listen to the record faculty members to listen to the recording. And I am uh, working on a committee with Richard, so I wanted to say hello to Richard. Thanks again. Okay, great. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. And if there's nobody else, we're almost at the time to come to a close. Uh, um, look, so, uh, Pamela, uh, two more comments came in via text. Uh, Melinda writes okay. in, uh, use a tracking sheet, but not as detailed. She likes the highlights of when revisions are back to the students. <laughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. Um, also has a, she also has a column of notes for in terms of specific feedback that she gave the students. Oh, good. Yes, and that, that is also helpful. I, um, I have not done that myself, but I have, actually I do make comments, sort of little notes to myself out there on some of them, but not all of them, but that definitely would be real helpful as well, so I'm glad to know you're using that too. Okay. And then Selena writes that she uses a different tracking sheet, but she's not included the semester plan information, and she's going to now start using that. And, and, you know, Selena, the reason I do that is because, you know, part of their, or really their grade for the semester in the capstone intensive is supposed to be based on whether they met the plan or not. And it just seems to me that's a very, I'm, I'm a real visual person, and that's a way for me to see right away, did they meet it or not. If that was colored, if it's still highlighted, like I did it when I first put it in, then they didn't meet it. So um, that's the only reason I do that. Anything else from anybody? Um, just Richard just writes in that uh, a lot of what he's heard today has been very affirming, so he's going to continue to have students provide summaries and follow-up meetings that they have he has with them. Okay, great. That's wonderful. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Pamela, just one last one. Um, uh, Jan writes in about having a track with notes about each weekly phone call um, with students. And that, is, that would also go well with the, the, uh, the tracking piece, is to keep up with those phone calls. And I find sometimes, Jan, that that's part of the hardest part. You know, we've got the emails, we've got our feedback on the papers, but sometimes I forget what happened in those, those phone calls, and it all kind of runs together. So that's a great, great tool as well. So essentially, as we come to a close again, we just want to pull these three pieces together because we feel like that that's going to lead us to completion and commencement. And that, of course, is our ultimate goal for all of our students. And so I want to thank you again for attending. There's my email. Feel free to email me if you would like to see, uh, you know, if you'd like me to send you a template of the accountability chart, if that would help you. I did create that for someone at the, um, at the winter session, and so I have that available. So uh, if, if I can help you in any way, let me know. Thank you so much for coming today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Pamela, for the great session. And looks like we have some kudos coming in to you and uh, definitely some great discussion and ideas sharing from the group as well. Um, I want to direct everyone over to the questions area. I have put the uh, feedback survey link there so you can give us feedback on today's session. Um, also, we hope to see you at a future webinar. Uh, so thanks again, everyone, for attending. And thanks again, Pamela, for excellent facilitation of today's session. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Take care, everybody. Okay. Goodbye for now, everyone. Bye.